Welcome to another exciting episode of the JV Report Quarterback oh, Center sucked. Exchange. Hi, <laughs> hi, I am Andy. Nobody ever, actually, nobody ever actually says that, by the way. Says what? Hut, hut, hike. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, well, good, That's great, great, wonderful. Welcome to another episode on today's show. We're going to talk a little bit of basketball, and then we're going to be dominated by football. Oh god! What's, basket, you, what's basketball? Basketball. It's it's uh they, they throw around an orange ball. It's uh, and they they throw it in a hoop, and then that's yeah, that's about it. That's how basketball works. Huh. It's about my understanding of basketball. Interesting. Let's start off. Let's start off because we have to talk about the big news that happened in the NBA, the National Basketball Association. For those of you that are new, I thought it was the National Basketball League. No, that's NBL. Oh. This is the NBA we're talking about. Clippers oh. sent... Wait, which league is uh, LeVar Ball in? Oh, my gosh. It's some foreign... And... Whoa. 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 Yeah. That's technically correct. Right. The, the LA Clippers sent... Uh, God, now you got me off track. I almost said LeVar Ball. You were not on track. <laughs> <laughs> The Clippers sent the Clippers sent Blake Griffin cross country number one. They never told him. He found out by Twitter that he was going cross country. And number two, they sent oh. him to the Detroit Pistons. Uh, uh, three so, three ball. Yeah, Detroit basketball. All right, that was terrible. Yeah, it was. Little uh. Right, what's a little shoddy that they didn't tell him, or I mean, I mean, to no, find out on Twitter that you've been that's what happens all the time in pro sports now. Oh, Twitter is the Twitter is the way to find things out. Or Sports Center, or Facebook, but nobody watches Sports Center, so I guess Facebook or Twitter. Mostly Twitter, though. That's true. Yeah. What do you think about the Pistons' chances this year now that they have Blake Griffin? Well, I was actually uh, at the Pistons Cavs game on uh, Tuesday, and boy, did the Cavs suck. <laughs> hey, we're kind of talking about the Pistons, but hey, Isaiah we'll talk about the Cavs too. Isaiah Thomas looks like a kid dressed up as Isaiah Thomas for Halloween. Oh, um, geez. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. For those of you just joining on the Instagram the feed, checking out the, the Andy Cam on Instagram, thank you so much for joining. Uh, AJ says that Isaiah Thomas looked like a little kid dressed up as Isaiah Thomas at the basketball game. Anyway, bro, the story is the Cavs suck, and the Pistons have a shot because the Cavs suck. Every team in the East has a shot right now because the Cavs suck. Yeah, the Cavs are – but, AJ but, says that the Cavs but, are – But it's going to be awful. Boston and the Cavs in the conference finals, so. <sighs> and who's going to win that? The Cavs. Hmm. Cavs, he thinks, I'm still not, they, I'm still not the gonna go against the Cavs, but they suck. They're they're booty cheeks. They are. They are. Doing as, pretty they bad. are as bad as it gets. How about we get on topic and talk a little bit about Blake Griffin? You know, I mean, that's a. It's a I mean, yeah, it's always fun to talk about the Cavs and how bad they're doing. But I now, mean, what, is, what, does have, what, what impact does this have on Detroit played, basketball? I mean, we're looking forward. Full season, yeah, his entire career, he hasn't played seventy games oh, in the last geez. four years. So if he's so now on the court, he's I mean, play he'll games. be pretty good. But if he's injured, as uh, pretty much wash. Which he will. Well, he's not injured now. I mean, he made his debut. He's going to get injured because he's Blake Griffin and he sucks. I mean, all well, this, this guy does is jump over AJ Toyota Camrys. Give me a break. Jump over Shaq and then come oh, back. Oh, he's better than just jump over somebody. Jump over Yao Ming. Don't <laughs> jump over a car. That's a joke. You suck, Blake Griffin. You jump over a bass or a jump over a car. Come on, man. I can't Leave Blake jump. Griffin alone. What a I deep. can't even oh. jump over my own couch. How am I my jump over goodness. Jeez Louise. How's this do for the city of Detroit? Not just the basketball operations of Detroit, but the city of Detroit. I don't think it does anything, to tell you the truth. No. Ah, well. Brought some hype to the city of Detroit. Brought hype to Detroit basketball, especially yeah, moving into a new arena. And yesterday, but now that the the introduction's over, nobody cares again. Well, now that you got two teams playing in a brand new arena that are pitiful. I mean, the Red Wings are pretty much hot garbage this year. The Pistons, Pistons are. Maybe the Cavs suck. Well, everyone in the East does. 
Jeez Booby Louise. cheeks. That's it for basketball. We're going to talk football now. <laughs> it's time to move on to football. Uh, yeah, you think we're going to talk NFL, but guess what we have to address? Guess what happened since the last QBC Exchange show? Since the last show, Vince McMahon announced that he's bringing back the XFL. Wow. Wow. Oh. Yeah, don't ever do that again. That was terrible. All right. <laughs> Set to return in 2020. Um, now that's all of a sudden a big hype. People are saying it's because all the NFL's ratings are down. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, You're buying into this XFL hype. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, I'm not. No? No. I mean, uh, Vince McMahon, he's a good businessman and everything, and he's got a pretty good – thing going with the wwe but that took uh it took a long time to build up and last i recalled they're not doing any wrestlemanias on uh, espn or abc or nbc they're still doing them on usa um so yeah i don't i mean it's a good idea to be fair they're doing it they're doing the pay-per-views now on their well, well it used to be the pay-per-views now on their own wwe network just yeah. like they'll play some games on the nfl network just like MLB play some games on the MLB network. Yes, we see the NFL and, network. The NFL and the MLB and the NBA all have contracts with ESPN, Fox, ABC, CBS, NBC. I always just say that they, they, they always to say that they can't get one. I mean, you get enough. They, I've it's never not... ever seen WrestleMania on any of those major networks ever. Okay, because I mean, it's Christ, obvious that it's it's obvious bad, that those are fake. Bad. They cover them, though. I mean, you've got the ESPN personnel. The championship was on ESPN oh, two God. last night. That's ESPN live, okay? The WWE. Two. Oh man, I hate to tell people, just like Santa Claus, but man, WWE sucks. is not real, and okay? So maybe that's why. The, oh well, okay, yeah, it might suck, but guess what? Vince McMahon's making a shit ton of money on it. He's making a heck of a league, he's making an enterprise, entertainment and he's enterprise out of it. a shit ton of money on this XFL. I can kind of see it coming. Well, the only thing he could lose is $100 million because that's all he put into it so far. Yeah, but he's going to have to put a ton more into it to get the league off the ground. $100 million ain't going to get eight teams in eight cities. That's going to get you, like, a pizza parlor in uh, Toledo. That's about it. It's not just going to get you just a pizza parlor in Toledo. It'll get you like five or six pizza parlors in Toledo. I'm just saying he's going to need way more money than that. $100 million ain't going to do it. Well, my problem was that it can't get the, the league can't get taken off the ground. Problem is, is he wants to do XFL-owned teams, which I don't get. Yeah, he, he tried that the last own, time with the he XFL. Wants to own all the teams. Yeah, he wants to own 100% of his entire f- operations, and I don't, yeah. don't get that. Because that's how it is in WWE. Well, yeah, I mean, he owns everybody in the WWE. Right, so, they all I mean, have contracts with him, and that's what he wants. That's the way he does his business, and that's how he wants to continue to do his business. He doesn't want to change how he does his business. He just wants to make the XFL family-friendly environment, and we're going to put the game, we're going to give it back to the fans, and blah, blah, blah. I talk like this now. I used to talk like this, but now I talk <laughs> like this. Uh, yeah, we're going to Johnny Bears can't play. Nick Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Bears no can't play because he uh, the money. Man. But, uh, but Tim Tebow, he can play because he loves God. Yeah, he invited, he invited Tim Tebow into the play, but he didn't specifically name names, but he pretty much labeled out. Johnny Football not going to be able to be in the league. Yeah, but the thing is, the thing is, is if he wants to get at least halfway decent talent, he has to take all the uh, the exiled NFL players like Johnny Manziel um, and Alden exactly. Smith. He has to get them and let them play because he's not going to have any attraction. Just waving to my Instagram cam. Hey guys, how's it going? Got your special handy <sighs> Instagram cam only. Uh, we got the quarterback center exchange show going on right now. That's Too bad fine. you guys aren't watching along right now. Oh, you're a fine. I am fine. Hypothetically, Thank let's you. let's hypothetically be on the XFL train for a little bit, just for okay. debate's right. sake here. Choo choo, we're on it. Yep, here we go. Choo choo. Uh, the How eight teams. Uh, there was a poll going on, and eight locations uh, that were favorited because the team, the league announced that it would be eight teams. Eight favorited locations consisted of four in the west, four in the east, San Diego, Vegas, Portland, and Omaha. And four in the east, New York, Birmingham, Alabama, Columbus, and Memphis, Tennessee. Obviously, New York and San Diego, Vegas put aside. Would an NFL franchise succeed there? Do you think that's why he's kind of like pushing 
for the XFL to get like these mid-major cities that don't have a team like Columbus. I think a team could succeed in Columbus. Birmingham, Alabama, I think a team could succeed there. Do you think that's why he's doing this? Um, yeah, maybe. I, I mean, mean I, think, bringing... I think I think if he really his hot his two hottest markets are the ones that the NFL left, and that's St. Louis and San Diego. If he want if he really wants us to get off the ground, his two most successful teams have to be St. Louis and San Diego. I would agree. I do think that a team Vegas, could succeed. He should not go. He, he should not go to Vegas. He did have a team in Vegas when they ran it last time when they ran the XFL, but he can't go there. They got the Raiders. They've already got the Golden Knights. They've got too much going on there. There's no actual populace. It's all just you know tourists and all that crap coming in there all the time. It's would you think that? Do you think that another league team could succeed where an NFL franchise already exists? Because they're going to be no. in opposite seasons. You don't think no. so? No, you can't. Even though they're in opposite seasons, teams. no. All right. <laughs> We'll talk more about the XFL. We just want to get the hype going. Well, AJ's being a Debbie Downer about it. I'm personally, I'm excited. You know, it's bringing some jobs to a mid-major city, giving NFL or giving football opportunity to those who aren't exactly NFL qualified. But speaking of the NFL, let's move on to the NFL. We're going to talk NFL the rest of the show because we got to start off with that Kirk Cousins, or I'm sorry, the Alex Smith trade to Washington, which kind of took me by surprise. I think it would took a lot of people by surprise. Who did it take um, by Why your initial I don't understand. What was surprising about it? The Redskins making a move? Because well, I knew Alex Smith was going to be. I knew Alex Smith was going to be on the move. You, I kind of thought he'd be going like somewhere that didn't already have a quarterback. Well, but Washington I mean, I guess doesn't have a quarterback. They don't have a quarterback under contract. <laughs> that's. I guess that's true. What are we talking about here? Well, your thoughts on your th- initial thoughts. I think it was a good move by the Redskins. I mean, uh, Alex Smith has officially been deemed the ultimate bridge quarterback in the history of the NFL. Uh, you bring him in for five seasons until you find somebody you like, and then you trade him. That's what the Ram or that's what the Niners did. Uh, that's what the uh, 49ers did. And hopefully, uh, Washington will be his last stop, and then he can just retire with all his money that he's made. Um, but he's a serviceable quarterback. I like the guy. He just can't win the big game. So. That's the key. That's the thing I was going to say about Alex Smith. He just can't win the big game. But, I would take him. But I would but, take him with the Cincinnati Bengals any day of the week right now. But with the Redskins situation, um, you know, you can't in a business environment like the NFL, they can't continue to let Kirk Cousins um, dictate how they're going to do their life. So, you know, Kirk Cousins was going to cost a hundred. That trade. What? I'm, is everyone else in a better place? Do you think the Redskins are better off after that trade? Do you think that trade? And do you think Alex Smith is in a better position? I don't think the Chiefs are. I don't think I don't think the Chiefs are because I don't think Patrick Mahomes is the guy. But I could be wrong. But I didn't see anything um, from him at Texas Tech that I thought was any that special. And then when he played in that final game this year, um, he was decent and he's got a big arm. And I'm sure I'm going to have to eat my words because Andy Reid is a quarterback genius. But I don't think I don't think he's that great. I don't think he's even better than Alex my Instagram Smith. cam. I love all of you watching on Instagram. Oh, my God. You got your personal, you got your personal Andy cam on Instagram, and I'm so grateful to have you all here. Can anybody see the under sweat of his under tit? <laughs> I don't think anybody can see that. Side There's boob. a reason behind this. We'll get into later. Side boob. Uh, That's my side, side boob. boob. <laughs> <laughs> I do think Andy Reid is a good Coach, I think Patrick Mahomes needed another year under a, a proven successful quarterback. But I mean, he had a great game as one game that he played, or a good game that he played, the one game that he played in. He's ready to take over an NFL franchise, let alone a competing NFL franchise. I mean, he could take over the Browns today, but is he ready to take over a team that competes in the AFC West every day? My money's on, I don't think so. But again, well, Andy Reid, quarterback guru, we're going to see what happens there in Kansas City. Uh, where do we see Kirk Cousins end up? Um, well, there's about 20 teams in the NFL that need a starting quarterback. So, <laughs> okay, let's let's just cut it in half. Let's say there's 16 teams that need a starting quarterback. Um, we'll and, cut it in half. We'll cut the 20 and, in half to say and, to talk about. And the number one team that needs a quarterback that's probably going to land them is going to be Denver. Um, they'll probably get rid of some Denver. salary cap in Denver. Yeah. I'm still thinking Cleveland. John 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 Elway has proven he can't draft well, especially at the quarterback position. Um, 
And he's going to take true. the proven commodity every time that he gets the chance. So you bring in Chris That's Cousins true. for 10 years, and you don't got to worry about quarterback for the next 10 years. And Kirk Cousins doesn't even have to play well in Denver. He just has to be better than Brock Osweiler, Paxton Lynch, and Trevor Simeon, which is not that hard. It's and not. they're going to be in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Jeez. Do you think he's Super Bowl bound quarterback with the Denver? I mean, I get that Denver's a good team. Denver's got a good team around. Denver, just Denver is automatically a top two or top three team in the AFC and a Super Bowl caliber team with Kirk Cousins at quarterback. But regardless, Denver still has to make the salary cuts. So I still lean with the Browns. They're going to offer him a ton of money. Get, the Browns yeah. are not going to get Kirk Cousins. You don't think Kirk Cousins is going to Cleveland? No, nobody wants to play in Cleveland. Nobody wants to play in Cleveland, according to AJ, no. which is true. I mean, Cleveland! Like, you remember when LeBron James did that shindig? Yeah. Also, Even, LeBron he... to... Even LeBron James doesn't want to play in Cleveland. He's going to leave to Golden State. God, I don't want to talk about that right now. You don't want to talk. That's okay. I don't want to talk about that either because he's not going to Golden State. He's not going anywhere in the NBA. He's going to stay. I hope so. Maybe not that, but. <laughs> Let's talk the Super Bowl now. We, in case you guys forgot, we have a football game coming up this weekend. It's the last game of the year until probably about August, September time, and it's the biggest one of the year. It is the Super Bowl. This year we got two one seeds, the New England Patriots of the AFC going against the NFC number one seed, the Philadelphia Eagles. And I figured, hey, what a better, what a better way to like honor both teams than to just kind of do my best Philly and best. New Jersey, or I'm sorry, New England, Baston impersonation. So you're looking at, eh, hey, what's the matter? Hey, hey, you know, hey, hey, that's clam fun. chowder in one that's hand. Fun. That's so terrible. Philly sandwich, Philly cheesesteak sandwich in the other hand. I tell you what, man. Terrible. Yeah, so that's why, hey, you know, USA, because, you know, we're Patriots. Hey, Boston, hey, Boston, what you got a problem with Boston, eh? Let me just go put on a pair of khakis, and we'll go see this one through, all right? That's a fine. That was fine. <laughs> you sounded like a midget working in the pizza shop, and I couldn't tell the difference between your Boston accent and your Philadelphia accent, so it was just terrible. Well, they're both about the same the way that I see yeah, it. Yeah, I see you. I tell you what, man, a Super Bowl that's got the West Coast just livid. Like, they're over watching basketball. They're doing whatever they do over on the West Coast. Well, here on the East Coast, we're celebrating football, the, man, the, the best sport in the world. Yeah. That's just the way I see it. Serious question for you that I just kind of started thinking. So let's go ahead and bring up the rumors. Um, but during these uh, NFL, during these media days at the Super Bowl, I'm seeing Bill Belichick smile a lot, lot more than he's been in the past. Like he's smiling. He's having a good time here. Got me thinking that maybe this is the year that he calls it quits. He's not going to retire. He's going to go somewhere else, though. <laughs> you, think also, you think he could go somewhere else? Yeah, I do. I think he could go somewhere else. Are you buying in? Are you buying into this that uh, SI report about how there's tension all around? I am. Yeah. I mean, this it. guy Bill Just Belichick. Does. I can tell you that all 31 teams in the NFL, besides the Patriots, would fire their head coach, no matter who it is, to bring in Bill Belichick as their head coach. I would agree. In a heartbeat. I 100% agree. In a heartbeat. Would they have to sign Tom Brady, too? Because he's only proven under Tom Brady. No, because that's the or problem. The problem is Tom Brady and Bill Belichick are button heads, and Robert Kraft from the reports is taking Tom Brady's side on pretty much everything, and Bill Belichick doesn't have to deal with it if he doesn't want to. Do you think it has something to do with him losing both his offensive and defensive coordinator at the end of the year? No, because this has been going on. They've been talking about this since the beginning of the season. So hot take here. AJ thinks Bill Belichick could end up elsewhere. I mean, there's only three teams still looking for a coach. Maybe he'll go to Denver with um, Kirk Cousins. I don't see him. Bunch of I, really don't, could, I really don't see him going anywhere else, but that's a good thought. That is a good – I don't know. I didn't think of him going elsewhere. I'm I just saying. Just I'm just saying no, I get, I I get what possible. you're saying. Nothing is for certain. But there's that possibility because Robert Kraft is always taking Tom Brady's side. I get that. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the deal is there, and it, it could all get fixed, and they could stay for another two or three years. But I know that the the tipping point of the whole thing was when Robert Kraft 
um, basically went to Bill Belichick and demanded that he traded uh, Jimmy Garoppolo because Tom Brady wanted it to happen. Because Tom Brady felt insecure and he felt uh, he felt tension that he was going to lose his job in the next year or two because Bill Belichick, don't mind him, would definitely pluck Tom Brady out of the starting lineup if Jimmy Garoppolo was better than him. Agreed. Belichick would do what's best for the team. That's what a head coach is supposed to do. But not in the NFL. Not, not when you're the NFL. Not if you're, not, not not if you're, when you're the, you. Not when you're the Patriots and your quarterback has won you five, possibly six Super Bowls. I mean, you let the guy play till he till he's laying in a hospital bed if he wants to. You owe him that. Right, you don't owe you don't you owe, do owe that. You do owe Tom Brady. I mean, I, I I rarely say you owe someone that, but when Tom Brady has, after this year, I do think when he gets more rings than he has fingers on his hands, I think you owe him a little something. I mean, to be honest, I'm not even gonna lie to you. The most sick thing that I still feel about quarterback situations is when uh, when uh, Joe, what's his name, Theismann? Joe Montana, when he got hurt. Uh, for the 49ers, and then they put uh, they put Steve Young in, and then they just shipped him off to Kansas City. That was one of the most disrespectful things they could have done to him. Hmm. Steve Young should have never been there, to tell you the truth. I mean, he won him three Super Bowls or two Super Bowls, whatever it was. And I know Steve was good, and he won a Super Bowl and everything, but they should have never should have never got rid of Joe and let him retire a 49er. Couldn't the same be said about Alex Smith right now, just after that trade? No, Alex Smith never won you a Super Bowl. What has Alex That's Smith done? It's always it's all about the Super Bowls. We're talking. We're talking. I'm talking about legacy and cementing your team. Like the 49ers were the team, the team of the decade in the 80s, and the Patriots have been the team of the last 20 years because Tom Brady's playing quarterback. Fair point. Tom Brady and Joe Fair Montana point. are on different levels. Everybody always called Joe Montana the greatest of all time. If you have the greatest of all time at quarterback, you let him do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> Is that kind of an NFL unwritten rule? It should be. I know a lot of people disagree with it, but it should be. I mean, people always live for the now. The Patriots are pr- the Patriots fans. I can guarantee you, if Tom Brady starts sucking, they might be some of the most greediest fans and just begging for him to be gone. They probably would. I we don't get know that taste that personally, but we get that taste for blood. We're like, oh, we got a championship. Yay, we owe it to this guy. And then you just keep winning, keep winning. That's your expectation every year is to just win it. And, I mean, if you're not winning, even if, like, Tom Brady Tom Brady would go out there and keep playing if he were to broke his finger. I mean, he's got a scratch on his hand and he is still playing. He would right. do anything to get out there and play. But these fans, like, if he was to, like, suck all of a sudden, the Patriots fans would just get him out of here. Get him out of here. Go back to Baston. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> God, it's terrible. He's an embarrassment to Baston. That's a fine. I'm done talking about this. You looking forward to the Justin Timberlake halftime show? No. Next no. question. All righty. Uh, let's we, we'll skip about talking about the Eagles because we talked about the Patriots for a while. Let's finally we're going to close out the show today with our predictions. God, this is going to be a good Super Bowl. I think. I do. Th- I mean, you got the. Patriots defense that is not top quality going against an Eagles offense that is not top quality with Nick uh, Foles back there. I mean, they, they look pretty, they look top quality against a top quality defense. I will they give them that. Really good against the Vikings. And then you got the Tom Brady, the goat. You can't count him out at all during the game. You have to play. I mean, we proved last year you have to play the entire game and more. You have to go to overtime with Tom Brady. So you got the goat versus the dogs, the underdogs. That is. AJ, who's winning Super Bowl Sunday? I hate to say it, but it's gonna. I, I think it's gonna be the Patriots. Six I mean, for Tom I mean, Brady. I mean, Six of them. You can't. You can't go against him. It, this could be. I mean, realistically, if Tom Brady wanted to actually retire, this would be the perfect thing. Two Super Bowls in a row, three in four years. You're 41 years old. You can just go off into the sunset, leave Bill Belichick alone. You got six Super Bowls, and you can just live the rest of your life. Being the greatest quarterback in the history of the NFL, and probably nobody will ever be as good as him. Ever. Hypothetically, if he did retire, would Bill Belichick still be in New England? Because there would be, obviously, the less tension. Yes. 
I'm going with the Patriots too. I was debating back and forth. I really wanted to pick the Eagles. I'm trying to like find any way to pick the Eagles, but man, you just cannot count out Tom Brady. He is the greatest to ever play the game. Probably the greatest athlete of all time, even though I still just watched footage of his combine. Man, he looked like a total scrub. I could have outperformed him at the combine. Okay, let's take man. a breather there. You could not have outperformed him at the combine. You are so full of yourself. Give me a break. Well, speaking of Tom Brady, two separate questions here. Two separate questions here for you because they're obviously different. Who's going to make the biggest impact of the game and who's going to be the MVP of the game? Who's going to make the biggest impact? Yeah, I mean, we got that. We got that a couple of years ago when Tom Brady won this or won won the MVP, but it was um, uh, who made that pick in the end zone against the Seahawks? Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler. Yeah, I mean, he was obviously the impact player, even though he Tom Brady won the MVP. Who makes the big impact? Because I mean, one news, one bit of news that we're not talking about: Rob Gronkowski Gronk passed concussion protocol, so Wait, he's got to be in the fine. Super Bowl. You barely got that name right. Wrong. Rob Rob Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski. He's gonna play in the game because I. So I think he's gonna make the impact of the game, even yeah. though I think Tom Brady is gonna win the MVP. Okay. Um, well, I would have to say that it's probably gonna be uh, Tom Brady. He's gonna make both. the impact plays. Yeah, he's gonna do both. Because <laughs> the Patriots aren't going anywhere without Tom Brady. The Eagles can win this game with. Anybody making a big play, but the Patriots can't win anything without Tom Brady. If Tom Brady has a bad game, they're going to lose. And there it is, folks. There's the quarterback center exchange Super Bowl LII predictions. AJ, you got any closing thoughts? Uh, let's see here. Um, first of all, man, oh man, am I excited for sports. <laughs> Secondly, what kind of sports? Good God, Nick Foles is really not that great. Oh, my <laughs> God. He's going to be starting. He's going to make – off of this game, especially if he wins this game, he's going to be like the most – the second most sought-after free agent quarterback in the NFL come this offseason. And I guarantee you teams are going to try to trade for him, do whatever they can to get him on their squad. <laughs> and nobody the wanted him. Is it Case Keenum? Yeah, Case Keenum sucks too, but <laughs> – Speaking of Minnesota, Kirk Cousins could end up there. That's a possibility for you. You really think so? Yeah. Why not? They I mean, got hey, three quarterbacks, and none of them are under contract. Why not? Spend yeah, the money. Kirk yeah, why not? You got they got the two they got the best receiver tandem in the NFL, a white guy and a black guy. It's awesome. Hey. And they've got Delvin Cook, who's going to be a superstar running back. And they got Latavius Murray, and they got Jarek McKinnon, and they got a just a monster defense, minus their corners who are like 100 years old. But Xavier Rhodes isn't 100 years old. Uh, Terrence Newman is. Terrence and Newman, f- former Cincinnati Bengal. Ah. Ah. Yeah, there you go. Imagine that. Sports. Sports. <laughs> Well, I'll leave it up to you, uh, folks watching. I'm still deciding whether I'm going to go work out tonight or not. So, I'm gonna wait, did that, give, did that giveaway thing from last week work out? Did anybody sign up for the giveaway? Nope. So, hey, I'm going to keep them for myself. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to this week's show. If you like, <laughs> that's a fine. <laughs> If you like this, leave a bit, leave a subscribe leave and a comment. Subscribe and then put a comment and let us know down in the jukebox. Jukebox, tell AJ you I'm love actually, the size of his nose, I'm man. Let me tell we're you. gonna get our own studio with production, and we're gonna have uh, background noises and stuff. It's gonna be great. But for now, this is crap. So this is what we're doing. This is crap. Well, I tell you, I put a tweet out today on my own personal account that. The goal yeah, for the JV surprise. report next year, yeah, the goal for the JV report, shut up, is gonna be that next year you and I. We're going to be on Radio Row of the Super Bowl. We're just going to be BSing with, like, Joe Theismann and, and as he, uh, you know, hobbles over. We're going to Terry BS Bradshaw. with Terry Bradshaw. We'll find anybody we can BS with because I'm just looking at all the people, like Barstool Sports, even even busted coverage of Toledo. Man, it's just all the fun that they're having there. We're going to do that next year. Okay. Super. All right, yeah, we'll see you later. Andy's uh, drinking a beer, so <laughs> – Leave a subscribe, comment. If we ever get legitimate, he'll stop being an alcoholic on the air. Thank you.